Hi, this is Kevin. This is Elon. And you're watching Disney Channel. <laughs> um, what's your role in youth ministry? My role is assistant youth director to Paul. And I'm just a volunteer. I just come in whenever they need help. Um, I am one of the intern pastors. My name is Paul Cho, and I am the youth pastor for TLC Lighters. I decided to come volunteer because I saw that there was a need. Um, I know that those in the youth ministry um, have a heart for something more, and I wanted to be a part of uh, making this process work where Paul and Yolan are able to create a space where they can encounter Christ, and I just wanted to be any form of support for them to be able to see Christ and uh, see how beautiful he is. Um, I initially volunteered for youth ministry because I came out of college in 2011 and I was asked by Richard and David, um, is it in regards to this retreat or just in general? This retreat, oh, no choice. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Youth ministry um, is something that I that is dear to my heart because uh, when I was a youth is when I really came to uh, walk closely with the Lord and fall in love with Him. And it was actually through Pastor Tony, who was my youth pastor at the time, that I came to really uh, fall in love with the, the, the God's Word. And so um, I really believe that youth is a period where uh, kids can really uh, be impacted by the gospel. And um, yeah, I desire to just care and. Uh, to feed uh, and to love the sheep that God has given to me. And that's that's, that's all I, I'm here to do. And um, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Definitely a hot mess. I heard that uh, Paul is doing games. And the last time I saw him do games, this man came out with a water balloon and said, no rules are out the window. And started throwing water balloons at us. I'm just joking, that was a joke. I love Paul. I know that he has a heart for the youth. I know that Yulon definitely has a heart for the youth. And so when you bring two people together who are faithful, God-honoring, and are willing to sacrifice, then uh, regardless of the event, you know that God is going to be in this space. So I knew that God was going to work. I, know, I don't know exactly how, but um, I just wanted to be a part of, again, being supportive in that process. Expectations were high and then low and then high again. I just had it to not had it, but I had to always readjust, always pray, and see what God is doing. You can plan a bunch of things. Um, you can say that it's going to be the most awesome program ever, but after a while, you realize God has things in His control, and you just have to be present. So high, low, high, low, and then just present expectations prior to coming to retreat was um, I realized that kids go through so many things that are beyond my control and even beyond my own knowledge and um, really I think this retreat was really about putting them into God's hands knowing that God truly knows them and fully uh, it loves them and, and in, I think in this retreat really God really was faithful and he answered so many prayer requests and I really um, just really thankful. That's all I can say. Yeah. The theme is fully known and deeply loved. And I think Evan summed it best in his sermon when he said that a lot of the times we like to show the best parts of ourselves. We want to be seen a certain way and we want to act a certain way. But with Christ, who knows every part of us, we have to be just vulnerable and honest. Um, and so when Christ sees the brokenness within ourselves and still says you're worth it, I'm still willing to die for you, um, that changes the paradigm of our lives. Retreat is fully known and deeply loved. And uh, the heart of this retreat actually came from uh, conversations with different students in the youth ministry and hearing their struggles, what they were going through, also hearing from our core group of students um, and hearing their uh, what, what they um, desired um, in, in, to see uh, in the youth group. And, um, you know, based on uh, just um, the time that I've had with these kids, you know, uh, this theme really was placed upon my heart. Uh, I realized with kids, um, you know, there's a lot that they face in this life um, that um, even even most when when I was their age, I didn't have to deal with. And, and, and I 
realized this theme was uh, something that would give them the security and hope. Um, it actually, um, ironically, the not ironically, but interestingly, one, one second, one oh shoot, sorry. Uh, um, ironically, this was a conversation I had with the guest speaker, Pastor Evan, and he was asking, he was telling me while we were eating um, tofu uh, that um, there's a question that every every student asks in this generation is, is it safe? And I want them to know that God is the safest place they can be. And uh, this true love community is truly a, a community where they can truly be known and fully loved. In Psalm 139, it talks about God knowing every single person before they were born, um, knitting them, forming them, um, having their lives written out before him. Um, and we often see that like when you go on Instagram or anything or talking to people, you um, are being told who you are and what you should be doing. But um, we wanted to remind the kids that it's not on the things that people are telling us, but it's really what the Bible is telling us and that their lives are deep things, not just something to be captured on a phone, but something that is a big, huge mystery full of love and God wants to be a part of that. Theme chapter Psalm 139 is is one of the most uh, uh, very uh, intimate psalms, I would say, um, where uh, both the person who's praying to God and uh, the God who knows him is, is so intimately um, spoken of. And I think uh, you know every every believer who reads this psalm really can resonate with it and, and feel the nearness of God and how He knows us so completely and yet still. Uh, loves us and I think that's one of our greatest fears is to be fully known uh, and not loved and yet our God fully knows us and he truly does uh, love us deeply. I think the mission statement hasn't changed since I was a part of working with the youth. I see that Paul and Elon are still exercising the same statement of um, trying to let the youth know that the world does not dictate their identity whether it's their grades, whether it's their reputation, whether it's what people say about them, whether it's about what they say to themselves. Um, the Bible is so much more richer and it's more objective. And God looks at them and says, you are my child. And so when we are brothers and sisters in Christ, that creates a sense of community that can't be seen anywhere else. So when we come to youth ministry, it's not a bunch of Asians coming together to play games. You know, that's everywhere else. And when we come to church, what we see is brothers and sisters who are willing to sacrifice, to die for one another, to serve one another. And I think the youth ministry does a great job in modeling that for them. Um, they're willing to fast, they're willing to serve, and they wouldn't tell anyone to do anything that they're not willing to do first. Um, every year in September, I have to ask myself, why am I doing youth ministry? And um, it gets... I have to re-cement with myself that youth ministry is a place for uh, the kids to truly know God through uh, fellowship with each other and being taught the basics of the fact that they belong to God and that they need to know Him. And from that, they have a purpose. And that purpose is unique, but overall the same, where they're all a part of God's story and different parts of the story and doing things together to help God's glory be known. I realize as a youth pastor, I cannot really change anyone's heart, but uh, my job is to be an example and really point them to the one who is uh, the one who gives them true identity, true purpose, uh, true um, belonging. And, and for me, I found that in Christ. And I really believe and I, I truly believe that um, every single one of these questions are answered uh, through a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ and there's no one more loving than him there's no one more um, gracious no more uh, noble uh, more pure than him and so uh, my, my, my belief is that if I walk with the Lord then I can help other kids to walk with him as well okay this is kind of cheating because I the retreat already happened <laughs> it's a time machine Okay, all right. Well, um, actually, to be fair, this retreat was pretty crazy because a lot of things were uh, 
or um, yeah, I actually had a lot of worries and anxiety coming to this retreat, uh, especially uh, there were students that I really wanted to come, but couldn't make it last minute, and then there were new kids who showed up randomly and uh, that I didn't expect, and also um, you know the weather was something that I was very concerned about. It just there was a million things I was worried about, but um, I think through this retreat, God really taught me to to trust in Him that. Uh, he really is our Heavenly Father who loves us and that we are more precious to Him than the flowers of the field and the birds of the air. And so this retreat really, um, I think, oh, what my expectation was uh, to really um, to trust in God, um, to work in the kids' hearts, um, realizing that it's not something I could do alone. And I really did see God answer so many prayer requests. Um, I think this retreat really reminded me the power and importance of prayer and i really believe god was really faithful this retreat he, he answered every one of the prayers i prayed and so yeah thank you so much um you know actually i learned a lot from our students um you'll be surprised these youth students are very very um, active in their faith uh, they really seek to be genuine in uh, evangelizing to their friends um, and I was really challenged when I saw f several students come out to FOMO this year um, but also um, you know I saw kids really trying to bring um, ch uh, their friends to church and uh, asking questions during Q&A about how can I help my friend know Jesus better um, and you know, seeing things like that I, I get really challenged by their real, real intentional intentionality and a desire to make Christ known in their life and yeah I really believe um, more than we think we will be surprised um, that, that the youth are, are more than meets the eye and so um, yeah I, I, I'm very challenged by them and they are um, our, our vision is to make youth group a place where, where we, we can invite all our friends and be, be able to belong there and um, yeah so I'm, we are lighters The moment that I gathered my small group, the first question I asked them was, where are you with God? And I was half expecting them to kind of give some um, basic answer, but they were all willing to be vulnerable and they shared how um, their parents rose them up with devos, but um, they don't know if they truly know God or if they have a relationship with God. Um, and for those who accepted Christ, they were unsure on how to build church relationships. So what I learned is that um, for a lot of people in the youth group, they are at least curious. And I think that um, they're worth us pouring our lives into. And um, I think God is definitely working within them. And we just have to be willing to do the work of um, trusting in Christ, knowing that He saves. And um, we just have to walk, along, walk alongside him and uh, pray, serve, and um, trust in the process. Um, I learned that fear and love and loving well is something that is always going to be hard, never easy. And um, I always get challenged to love well during youth group retreats or retreats in general so it's a good reminder to um, look beyond your own selfishness and your own comfort and actually just accept people as they are I think I experienced Jesus both in like the quiet moments and the loud moments it's just refreshing to have Evan um, as the guest speaker because he brings in a lot of his personal experiences and um, I think the kids are resonating with it. So when I have a, uh, a youth tell me that this is their first time praying in a really long time, or I have somebody else open up about um, like the brokenness in their parents and how um, the word of God has finally um, cracked into them, and um, they're willing to be vulnerable, they're willing to um, be okay with being emotional, and they're okay with um, sitting in the quiet and praying. I think that that's the evidence that God is working. And um, 
he is alive. And whether it's in the loud moments or the quiet moments, that God is faithful. Mm, I think I've experienced, not I think, I've experienced God when the kids are curious about wanting to know how to pray more, um, how to use the Bible to pray more. Um, I experience God when the kids genuinely care for each other and look out for each other. And um, I experience God when I'm just asking for help in the quiet moments between sessions where I'm asking him to lead and wake the kids out of their apathy. And God reminds me that in the things that I ask, I'm also asking for myself. So if they're apathetic, then I've been apathetic. And God's tried to wake me up too. So everything, every exercise of love here towards the kids is a reminder of how God has loved me too. So I think um, a lot of the Christian life transformation happens when what's in your head finally hits your heart, right? When the head and the heart connect. And, you know, I think, um, you know, it's one thing to know that God fully loves you and you are fully known. Um, but it's one thing to actually, uh, for that to hit your heart. And, you know, I think at this retreat, uh, you know, by God's spirit and his grace, you know, I was able to really uh, experience that during one of the worship sessions when we were singing. I, I felt the, uh, the love of God in, in a way that I haven't felt in a while. And it was very, very, uh, it brought tears. I, I couldn't, I couldn't stop crying as I was worshiping. Um, I usually don't get that emotional, but uh, you know, I really felt the love of God in the worship. And so kudos to the praise team as well. Thank you so much for coming and preparing such amazing worship sets. And, uh, you know, I think the last thing was also through creation. You know, when I went up there the first night, I saw the stars and it blew me away. It reminded me of my first time to Arizona when I was in eighth grade as for missions and seeing the stars up there. And I really believe God communicated to me through his creation how he loves us. And I think that's the way God does it. He doesn't just give us cold promises. He could just say, I love you. But he actually shows us through um, he gives us a rainbow to Noah. He gives Moses, uh, or he gives um, Abraham stars. He gives uh, us the bread and wine. And he reminds us every day that he, he truly loves us. And so um, I was very touched at this retreat. So, can I share the joke? Sure, you can take the mic though. Hi, I got this one from Lynn. She was laughing so hard that she couldn't tell me the joke. Um, so I'm gonna share with you guys. What do you call a duck? looking back at you or what do you see when a duck is looking back at you you supposed to say what there you go what you see a butt quack <laughs> i'm telling you she was laughing so hard that she couldn't tell the joke so if you're watching this credits to you that was a good joke. Even though I made fun of you at the time, this is my third time telling it, so it has to be pretty okay. Jonathan, what do I do? Question, does King Saul want to kill you? Yes, tell me what to do. Fact, King Saul hates me. Fact, I love you. Take the shield and the sword so you can live, because you won't be able to do it without it. This is the creator of One Journalism. Hello guys, uh, welcome to our vlog. We are about to step into this museum. There's gonna be a lot of freaks in there, so we'll see some stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay guys, coming up to the first attraction right here. We have a wild Korean. Okay, that's actually racist. Where did you? Look, he doesn't even know what he's saying. What a cool attraction. Oh, oh, oh. Alright guys, second attraction is the speakers. Um, can you speak English? I mean, it's not works well. I'm just unsure. Well, I guess not, guys. I guess that concludes <laughs> our video. <laughs> what?
A whole new world. They shine and shimmer and flood. Yeah. God. God. I wish I had a bigger butt. <laughs> Actually, recorrect. I wish I had a butt. What's up, I got a different I'm too tired. Get up, get up, get up, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, am I still filming? <laughs> oh, <laughs> fantastic. Are you okay? <laughs> Off the side. Why are you eating? <laughs> 